So this example shows how to use the multiplication property of probability. Um, in this example, the first part we're going to do is you're going to pick three cards from a deck and you want to find the probability that they're all queens if you do not replace the cards after they're picked. This sample space is too large to write out, which is why the multiplication principle is so useful. We're going to start off with going ahead and rewriting this probability statement in mathematical terms. So we want the probability that all are queens, and we're picking three cards, so we want the probability of three queens. That means, if you think about it, that the first card has to be queen, and the second, and the third. And that's why this is a multiplication principle, because we have the words and in here. Anytime you have and, you can use the multiplication principle. Though I don't normally use it unless I have a sample space that's too large to write out, because it's too complicated to use on some occasions. So let's look at what is the probability that the first card is a queen. Since there are four queens in a deck, and there are 52 cards in the deck, then the probability that the first card is a queen is 4 to 52. The multiplication principle then says we multiply that by the probability that the second card is a queen, but we have to have had the first card was a queen also. So instead of there being four queens left in the deck, there are now only three queens left in the deck because we left that card out. And instead of being 52 cards, there's now only 51 cards. Then, once I see the word and again, I put a multiplication symbol, and we want the probability the third is a queen. Again, if the third's a queen and we didn't replace, then we have to assume the first two were queens. So for the third to be a queen, there are only two cards left in the deck that are queens, and there's only 50 cards left in the deck. So there's your probability. You can multiply those together if you want to and actually come up with the answer. Now let's look at the problem slightly different. This time we're going to pick three cards from the deck, and we want the probability that they're all queens if the cards are replaced after they are picked. So again, we're going to write this as a probability of three queens, which would again be the probability that the first is a queen, and the second is a queen, and the third is a queen. So again, we're looking at an AND statement. So we've still got the idea of an AND statement. So it still means multiplication. And so we look at the probability that the first card's a queen. Again, there are four queens in the deck out of 52 cards. The minute I see the word AND, I put a multiplication symbol. Now let's look at the second card being a queen. The difference between this problem and the one we just did is that we put that card back. So that queen is now back in the deck, so it's possible for us to pick that queen again. So there are still four queens in the deck, and there are still 52 cards in the deck. Now let's go on to the third one. Again, I see the word and, some multiplication, and now we look at the third queen. Again, we put that queen back. That card went back in the deck, so there still are four queens in the deck, and there are still 52 cards in the deck. So that's this probability. Again, you can multiply them all together. The first one are with dependent events because the probabilities changed because we didn't return the cards. The second one is with independent events because the probabilities stayed the same because we returned the card. And that's it.